Welcome back, Kit Bashers. As you can see, my kit is largely just held together with blue tape, so you're not going to get an update from me today. But not to fear, Ben Lake, Eric White, Dana Koala, and Steve Brown have all been working fast and furious on their Kit Bash projects. So we're going to check in with each one of those guys today and see how they are progressing on their state line project. Thanks, David. Hey, Rail fans. I am still having a ton of fun with my version of the State Line Kit Bash Challenge. And, you know, I've got the structure built already, but I needed a deck to put the structure on that the locomotive can roll in on. Now, keep in mind, the rules of this challenge state that I can't have any diorama bases. In other words, I can't glue a piece of track to my layout and put the structure on top of it. It's all got to be portable. Added a unique challenge and actually caused me to overbuild what I'm about to show you. But let me just show this to you. First of all, assembled. You can see I've got the model going here. I've got these H columns coming down. Now, if I move in real close, you can see the H columns protrude down past the decking. And that is because uh, when I made the structure itself, uh, it's warping a little bit on the walls and it doesn't sit square and pretty on the deck. So those H columns actually extend down past the deck and I use them as alignment pins to keep everything straight. And quite honestly, uh, coming out pretty awesome if I do say so myself. So let's just open this up again real quick like this. And first thing I'll show you is I went ahead and scored this top piece to show some kind of control joints. That's in case there's cracking, it stops. You see it in concrete all the time. I just use the back of my X-Acto knife to score along there lightly, two passes each. And then I rub my finger over it like that. And then just the oil in my finger was enough to sort of highlight those cracks. Once I'm weathering it and stuff, you'll see a little bit better. But again, I had to overbuild this. And so what I did is I took a short piece of flex track, prepped the ends of it like you would for anything else on a model railroad. And then I glued it, super glued it to a piece of 060 just plain styrene. So I have something secure for it to be mounted to. After that, I put on some more styrene over the railroad ties and then a piece in between. But here's the deal. I had to go through and bevel the inside edges of the styrene so that when it sits up over the railroad tie, it doesn't set up too high. I've got tie plates there and everything else. So by doing it that way, I was able to get it nice and flush and it's just barely perceptible. It's just barely perceptible here that the rails stick up higher than the deck. And I did that because ultimately I got to clean these rails. I want to clean them without wiping off paint or whatever else I have there. And also because I don't want the trucks on the switchers to get hung up on the decking we put on. So ultimately this was pretty easy to do to make this base for it. And as I said, once I uh, put this thing back on, it sits on there nice and square and boom, it lines right up. Now here's what I'm gonna do to finish this thing off. I've already built this observation deck right here that's gonna go inside the structure. I made this from an ice house from another Walters kit that I never used. Um, and it's already got this cool kind of cross bracing on here and I put the handrail on and stuff like that. So that's gonna get glued inside. I got some more details to put inside and then of course the LED lighting. So I would say come the end of the day, this thing just flying right along and I'm having just a ton of fun doing this. So anyway, there's my update. Now David, back to you in the studio. Speaking of progress, we have our first outside contributor to the Kit Bash contest. Now Mike Pagano and his daughter were out driving around their hometown one day and they passed this building in Bellingham, Washington, and they thought, hey, that kind of looks like the Kit Bash Challenge building, and what can we do with it? Well, Mike did a little bit of research first, and he found out that that building had been on the Milwaukee Road, right here on Franklin Street, and then it was rail served at one time. So obviously they got cars in, and then they transferred material out of the cars to trucks in some way, shape, or form. So he and his daughter bought an N-scale kit, and they've started their Kit Bash project. And you can see here that they've already blocked out the openings in the front to revamp them so that they look a lot more like this. So Mike and family, welcome to the challenge. And just a reminder for those of you at home that if you've already kit bashed a version of this building and it's on your layout somewhere or you're starting into the project, make sure that we get those update photos. And you can email them directly to dpop at kambach.com. 
Oh, hello. I'm working on my uh, state line project here. Let me, uh, oh yeah, now I can see you. Um, what I'm doing here is extending my building, doubling the length of it. So I took two kits, put them together, have to scrape all the sanding debris out of there and some of the perfect plastic putty that I've been using. That's water-based, so you can't just wash it away. This is another piece here. This is the side that will be facing the uh, aisle of the layout. It'll be a little bit more interesting. I think I'll have to open up some of these garage doors because I'm modeling a, an industry or business that was in Pennsylvania and modeling the summertime, and Pennsylvania's summertime is hot and sticky, so you would want these garage doors open. I was looking at these windows, seeing if I could open those up, but that looks like that might be a bit more work than it's worth. So this is just going to be a scrap building. It's not going to need all these windows, so what I'm going to do is block some of them up with this Pike Stuff concrete block material. These have the exact same block sizes as the Walther's kit does, so that'll fit in nicely. Uh, it's course for course, I can just fill up a whole window or maybe leave part of it open with some glass block, something like that. This is kind of a seedy part of town, so not going to be too many open glass windows where people might get in and take copper and stuff like that. All right, so to give you an idea what this is going to look like, It'll just be two long walls with the front of the building. I'm going to have to lengthen the roof to fit that. So of course that long building is going to need a long roof. I'll take these two pieces of the roof, glue them together, and then on the top of the roof we'll have the William Cohen and Company scrapyard lettering up there, like on the photo that I showed you earlier. And then the fun part is just going to be all the painting. Um, this will be a, a white painted concrete block building, but I think I want to take some of these um, inserts and make them look like they're unpainted concrete block like it's been done later. Uh, the garage door, some of the door trim. I want to make that look like the paint is peeling off the wood there. The windows are, are metal, so make them look like they're a bit rusty. So I think the painting and finishing is going to really be the fun part of this project. Hi there, I'm just here working on my state line structure. Um, originally, I was going to do something more along the lines of a low profile building or a flat. But as I got going, I figured it would actually be easier to do a four-sided structure. Um, I'm still making a combination type depot. And I made this mock-up here. Um, very crude mock-up, but I needed to visualize what I was going to do. So I photocopied kit pieces, cut them out. Um, this would be the track side of the station with a bay window, the passenger end. Here's the freight express end. Um, the the fronts, or the ends will be, this end will be more of the freight house, so there'll be big freight doors on the end here. And this will be the, the front of the station, so there'll be doors for the people to go in. The other side, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet, but there'll probably be truck loading. The whole thing's going to be on a platform to get it to track level, and there'll be like the, the station platform here, a freight platform here. They'll both be about a car length long. And then again, there'll probably be some truck loading here at the end and perhaps on the other side. So I've, I've just started on working with the, the plastic part here. Um, I have the rough of the track side wall. I was able to construct a bay window. Actually, these are the bay windows made out of some of the, the end pieces that I'm not using. Um, I ended up having to get two kits just to have enough of the walls, especially to have two end walls. Because um, again, they'll be, they'll be the same on each end, but this one will have the big windows and the personnel door. Um, the other side will have just freight doors on the end. So for the freight doors, I didn't want to use the doors that came with the kit because these are a bit too modern for what I was going for. I wanted something that looked more like the transition era or steam era. Something more like these, these titchy freight doors that represent like wood doors. Um, unfortunately, these are too narrow, so they won't fit the opening that I have. So I'll, I'll use some sheet styrene and some, some styrene strips to laminate the modern freight doors to get something that looks more like this. But overall, I have a lot of freedom to do what I want to do because this is a freelance structure. Um, but, you know, I still want it to look plausible. still want it to look like it could have existed somewhere in the Midwest in the steam to diesel transition era. So we'll see how it turns out. Well, 
This right here is the cheese factory. So I'm not quite sure if it's going to still be a cheese factory. Um, I'm thinking of doing something a little bit, probably a little easier to do the interior for. I'm thinking something like a electrical um, supply dealer or some kind of building supply type thing. But uh, let's take a look at it. Here's the front of the building. It is exactly like the Walther's kit. Um, I didn't do any modifications to the front at all. Although I would like to put some gooseneck lamps on it somewhere, probably here and here, just to kind of like make it interesting. Probably going to be lit too. And I'm probably going to end up doing the same configuration for the doors and the windows on the front. Once we're inside, the first third of the building is again roughly about the same. But as we start heading back, this is where I've made the changes. I started uh, working out this idea where it has the original brick structure under metal sheeting. And as I turn it around, you're going to see this brick de detail down here. Uh, this is just plastruct um, cinder block sheet. Um, here's uh, one of the Walther's kit windows. I didn't really like the full grid pattern. It just didn't really look modern enough. So what I did was just clipped out the uh, the grid off the top and the bottom and just left with this little support right here. I think that's going to be a great look for the rest of the windows as well. Oop. On this side of the building, again, you have a little bit more of that brick detail in the metal sheeting. Um, also moved one of the uh, garage entry points over here. So I'm really happy with the results so far. Maybe it'll be a cheese factory, maybe not. But in the end, I think it's going to be a very interesting building. Well, as you can see, I have a long way to go yet to catch up with everybody else. But at least I've got this nice state line hat I can wear. Remember, you can follow along with us on Instagram or Facebook. If you post your state line kit bash project to Instagram, remember to put at MR Video Plus and hashtag state line kit bash in your caption. All right, we'll see you next time.